Hello everyone, this is Dr. Mungli. In this video, I will be giving you all the high yield points with uh, vitamin B1 and that is thiamine. Now, the thiamine is available in the foods derived from both plant and uh, animal source, but it is richly available in unrefined grains and uh, cereals. One of the points that you really need to remember is uh, polished rice, that is white rice has the least amount of thiamine and people who consume polished rice or whose staple diet is polished rice, rice so they will be, they may be having a deficiency of thiamine. One another point uh, that you need to remember in, term, in terms of dietary deficiency or uh, kind of food uh, pads or the habits that person may have to get into the thiamine deficiency is alcohol consumption. Consumption of alcohol, it decreases thiamine levels by interfering with the thiamine absorption and later it's going to uh, uh, degrade uh, thiamine levels, faster degradation of thiamine levels within the body, especially with the acetaldehyde. Now the active form of thiamine in our body, it is thiamine pyrophosphate. Now this thiamine pyrophosphate is used in uh, two main reactions in our body. So that's what is the functions of thiamine. So the functions of thiamine can be broadly classified into type of reactions and that is oxidative decarboxylation reactions and the transfer of keto groups reaction. Now oxidative decarboxylation reactions as the name says in any reaction where there is oxidation reduction reaction going on along with the decarboxylation that is removal of carbon dioxide. There are three main enzymes which are involved in oxidative decarboxylation reactions and they are worth remembering or the memorizing. And that is pyruvate dehydrogenase complex, alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase complex, branched chain alpha keto acid dehydrogenase complex. Now another kind of reaction where thiamine is used is transfer of keto groups done by transketolase enzyme which is participating in pentose phosphate pathway. Now let's move on to see deficiency manifestations with uh, thiamine. So what happens if there is a thiamine deficiency? So disease that is related with the thiamine deficiency we refer it as beriberi. Now there are two kinds of beriberi, so depending on what is the type of food that person is taking and what is its the daily activity. So those two beriberis are like dry beriberi, we have dry beriberi on one side and then we have wet beriberi on the other side. Now what kind of people will get dry beriberi? So people who take a low calorie diet or poor, poor calorie intake and who lead a sedentary life. So poor caloric intake and sedentary life, those people, they, it, is, it has been observed that they will develop dry beriberi. And the people who consume high carbohydrate diet and who are having sternous physical activity, particularly the labor or laborers, so we, who are, whose main diet is uh, carbohydrate and they do heavy work. So that kind of people, so they generally get into wet beriberi. Now as the name says dry beriberi and wet beriberi, these are two contrasting type of diseases coming from the same vitamin deficiency and that is thiamine. So it all depends on what is the type of food a person is taking and what kind of lifestyle that the person is having. Now often you can see combination of the, these two signs in, in some of the patients like uh, there can be signs and symptoms of dry and wet both in a same patient. It's not always that there is a characterization or the distinction in every patient with beriberi. Now dry beriberi mainly it, it the system that is involved in dry beriberi is the nervous system so that's what is the basic classification between dry and dry uh, and wet beriberi here in dry beriberi so the cardiovascular system is uh, sorry the nervous system is affected in uh, dry beriberi since the nervous system is affected here so you are going to see signs of neuropathy and uh, polyneuritis some of the signs that you see related with this is wrist drop, 
food drop, decreased sensation, decreased reflexes, muscle wasting. So later on, so patient can be bedridden, so it can lead to bed ulcers, bed sores, and ultimately it can lead to complications and death. On the other side, wet beriberi, cardiovascular system is mainly involved here and the heart is pumping over time and the cardiac contraction is weak here. So because of this what happens, there will be four chamber dilatation of heart that is cardiomegaly is seen. So because of the cardiomegaly weak heart contraction, so there can be no, fluid accumulation within the pulmonary vasculature and that can give rise to orthopnea, breathlessness, it can give rise to palpitation and also accumulation of fluid in the dependent parts and that is edema. So these are so patient may die because of the cardiac failure later on. So these are the manifestations that you get uh, from thiamine that is beriberi. So depending on the lifestyle, so you can see two kinds of beriberi there dry beriberi and wet beriberi so dry beriberi involves nervous system and wet beriberi it involves cardiovascular system now uh, people uh, who are alcohol abusers they will manifest with a disorder called wernicke korsakoff syndrome note that uh, this wernicke korsakoff syndrome is a combination of two diseases one is wernicke's encephalopathy and other is korsakoff psychosis combination of two diseases we refer it as wernicke korsakoff syndrome we also sometimes call this as wet brain now wernicke's encephalopathy component of wernicke korsakoff syndrome so in this particular uh, uh, disorder so wernicke's encephalopathy component manifests as nystagmus that is to and pro movement of the eyeballs ophthalmoplegia so that is a weakening of the extraocular muscles cerebellar ataxia so where there will be cerebellum is involved and that can lead to alteration in the body coordination or the coordination of the movements now the Korsakoff psychosis, it involves memory loss. Memory loss can be anterograde memory loss or it can be retrograde memory loss. One of the interesting uh, psycho psychiatric finding that you see in Korsakoff psychosis is confabulatory psychosis. This is a characteristic feature of Korsakoff psychosis component. Confabulatory psychosis is, it is spontaneous narration of events that have never occurred or person has never uh, as witnessed so that kind of spontaneous narration where the person never experienced any events but still he will be able to explain it as if the person has seen it so that is what is called as confabulatory psychosis which is very characteristic of Korsakoff psychosis so the combination of all these signs seen in alcohol abusers, we refer that as a wernicke korsakoff syndrome. So if this disease is diagnosed, identified, so the treatment is very simple. So you need to give thiamine infusion so it can take care of many of these signs and symptoms. Although it, can, it may not reverse the neurological signs, but it can take care of significant signs and symptoms there. One another point I would like to explain you related with thiamine is alcohol induced hypoglycemia. So whenever person takes too much of alcohol in a short period of time without consuming uh, a proper food, so over a period of so or hours what happens they get into hypoglycemia. One of the main reason for alcohol induced hypoglycemia is decreased gluconeogenesis. So I'll be making video uh, in, my, in, uh, in, in future, so maybe in few days, how exactly alcohol induces hypoglycemia. Anyway, so the main point here is alcohol causes decrease in gluconeogenesis process and leads to decrease in blood glucose. Now coming to the treatment, so when you uh, identify alcohol induced hypoglycemia, so we always need to give glucose infusion along with the thiamine because alcoholics or uh, alcohol decreases thiamine levels if you just infuse glucose without thiamine what happens already alcohol has would have decreased thiamine so glucose initially it is metabolized into glucose 6-phosphate later into pyruvate pyruvate go into acetyl CoA during this process uh, enzymes will start to consume thiamine that will drastically bring down thiamine levels and over a period of time what happens there won't be any thiamine available 
to convert or to metabolize glucose because this is what happens glucose which forms pyruvate so pyruvate will be diverted into lactate formation rather than acetyl coa so lactate builds up and that can give rise to lactic acidosis and also when the acetyl coa is not formed in the deficiency of thiamine so acetyl coa is a major uh, substrate for tca cycle and later into electron transport chain so overall there will be atp depletion energy depletion will occur if you infuse only glucose in alcohol induced hypoglycemia that is why you should make sure that whenever glucose infusion is given to alcoholic patients so we need to give thiamine infusion along with that so that thiamine levels are maintained this is all about uh, thiamine vitamin b1 in brief i hope uh, i have uh, you have got all the high yield points that can help you to prepare properly for exam or any competitive exam or just for your uh, general knowledge here is about thiamine or vitamin b1 thanks for watching and i will see you in uh, some other video till then take care